So uh, we got some recent videos. What are the recent videos? I know for me, I had the SVS 3000 Micro, <laughs> and then before that, I did the OSD uh, SS8, like that slim subwoofer. Chana, I think you did the REL. Oh, yeah, I got a REL subwoofer, HT1003. Yeah. The 1003, little baby. So. The little, little baby, baby one. Dude, that thing is so tiny, man. Like, just sitting it on top of the 15-inch, I'm like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aaron, yeah. you just recently did one where you're comparing the two, like, SB2000 Pro versus SB3000. Is that right? Yeah. little yeah. shootout? Right. Yep. And then, Michael, you have your uh, your famous oh, yeah. home theater tour update. Yeah, man. I hadn't done that in, like, man, it's been forever. Yeah, it's man. Over a year. So if you're wondering why Michael, he was having a few issues with his microphone, so he's just using the webcam mic. So apologize for that. I don't know what's going on. Mike's having mic problems. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he called it. <laughs> he knew, knew what I was reaching for. Oh, mercy. So, yeah, um, you know, all those videos, I think there's something in common. We all have some subs, right? Oh, we we all got it. subs going on. And it seems like the new thing is like smaller subs. Have you seen that? Last time we were talking about the Kef KC62. Yep. And then, boom. <laughs> SBS. Everyone can thank Bose. Everybody's <laughs> making a lifestyle subwoofer that's right now. That. Lifestyle subwoofer. You know what I've tested actually is the, the Sono sub. That thing's pretty small. And yeah. it, it was hitting pretty deep. But that it's weird. Like it's, it's 700 it's weird. bucks, it doesn't, it's 700 bucks and it didn't really sound clean. Like you couldn't really tweak the settings on it. It was either just like super boomy or a little bit less boomy. Like those are the settings. It was kind of weird. You couldn't do your, you know, you can do like parametric EQ or anything like that. Even though they have like a room correction thing, it didn't, it never got it to sound really good. Didn't sound good when you got room correction going in it? Well, it wasn't, it was their room correction. Oh. Right? Oh, okay. So it was their own little little thing. Um, yeah, what do you guys think about these micro subs, these small subwoofers? I mean, it, it, as far as, like, the whole compact thing, like, you know, I'm in here 10 foot by 14 foot with 8 foot ceilings. I'm at, like, 1,100 square feet or yeah. 1,100 cubic feet. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the little 10 inch rail over here. Like, I, I, I got enough space for that. Yeah. I don't I don't think I got enough space for a 12 inch, you know, um, so yeah, like if 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 they um, if they sound good, if they do what they want, what you need them to do, mm -hmm. you know, then then all good, then all good. But if they're like more hype than well, bass, yeah. then, then <laughs> I think it's one of them off. You have to kind of just have some realistic expectations of what, you know, you can't expect it to go down to seven hertz or you can't expect it to you know shake your entire house but if you just want to add in some lower octaves and fill in that bottom end you know whether it's for movies or for two channel um and especially if you just need that tight space you know some people are saying well why not get the pb 1000 you know um it'll probably outperform it and it's like 200 bucks cheaper well the reality is they sell the small compact sub for a reason you know it's for people that want that really tiny you know small profile it's barely wider than the actual driver itself or both drivers um so i think it definitely fits a niche and i think it fits you know the needs of some customers but not everybody you know mm -hmm. uh snoot says would you guys ever use five micro subs one located at each main floor <laughs> Uh, level Hell speaker. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would. Uh, me and Joe were trying to discuss how many mini subs does Michael need <laughs> to to replace yeah. his uh, JTRs, oh right? So how, how? What did we say? It was a ten. Uh, or 15? No. Uh, um. I think it was like, t like ten or something like that. But then we decided like it'd probably be fifteen, counting all the excursion. It takes probably like about fifteen of those stacked. <laughs> and then. <laughs> People that are smarter than me doing math, they figured it would take probably six to seven PB16s to equal the RS2s. Oh, wow. so what one or two RS2s? Uh, that part I don't know. He was doing mm. the calculation. I'm guessing two since I had two. Okay. Um, but he just well, yeah, I don't know. But I think what they were doing is looking at eight hertz 
which is what they're flat down to in my room. <laughs> so they're thinking, you know, everybody else falls off pretty drastically at right. you know, 17, 16, 15, 14. Right. So to get down to eight, you got to have a lot more of those subwoofers to get that volume um, on up there. Yeah, that's the problem. You can't change the F3 no matter how many you get. So yeah. you're just going to have to hold, buy a whole bunch of them and then <laughs> shell them. Shell exactly. them at like 20 hertz, you know? <laughs> exactly. Well, hold on a second. It'd still be fun. Hold on a second. How about what if you got a bunch? So let's say it, it is making those, you know, it is hitting 16 hertz, let's say, but a low volume. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you if you put a bunch of them together and then kind of just use DSP to, like, cut mm-hmm. off the excess, mm-hmm. can't you use uh, some of those at reasonable volumes? Aaron? At the reasonable like, volume. You can. At yeah. reasonable well, that- volumes. That's what I was saying. I mean, you could do it, and then you just have to put a shell filter on it, like to cut everything above, you know, twenty or thirty hertz, because otherwise that would be way too high in level, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Because you would basically like... low pass your subwoofers at about thirty hertz. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> so, I mean, to to even it out, I guess. I mean, yeah. just you know, thinking of it in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, you know what's well, yeah. you know what's funny? I actually uh, mentioned this in my video. I'm like, if you need. Um, a subwoofer to go down low and tickle that brown note of yours. This is probably not the one. <laughs> yeah. <probably not. laughs> yeah. Uh, I think as long as people are, you know, understand what they're getting, yeah. you know, like you don't buy one of those types of subs and expect it to go down to 10 Hertz with hundred percent with any authority at all. Yeah. I would, I would assume then. Yeah. I think it's okay. I, most like, of those are like the, the cheap ones that I, that I tested like last summer, those 10 inch ones from Amazon. They're like mid base, mid base modules, not sub. Yeah. Ones. You know? yeah. mm-hmm. So there are ways of space. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, no, seriously. I mean, they're I pretty big. They're pretty big, right? So I, I they're bigger be. than this uh, 3000 micro. And they're not coming even close to 20 hertz. Let's be honest, yeah. right? Yeah. Those are not coming close. <clears throat> um, I'm very curious because I know that there's some talks about you getting some 3000 micros to, to measure. Right. Right. With your CA 2010. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna that's gonna tell us the whole story, right? Yeah. About how loud it's gonna get at certain frequencies. Right. Well, and the, so my thing is, you know, I, in car audio, s- shallow subwoofers have been a big deal for a long time. So I'm just like, why don't people just go out and buy some shallow 10 inch Kenwood subwoofers and get a prefab box on eBay and just call it a day? You know, get you a Pro Audio amp that costs 200 bucks with a thousand something watts and you're done, you know, but uh, it's a lot harder, I guess, to do that than it is just to buy something that's ready to go. You plug a power cord into it and you're done. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder how well some of the car audio subs would do if you just, you know, stuck a plate amp on them. Oh, or, you yeah. know, power. I'm, I'm like, some of those are pretty legit. So, oh, yeah, and they have to be a lot of the SPL based ones are because they're, they're expected to be beat on, you know, I mean, they're expected to straight up be abused, <clears throat> not just played around and in a home theater, but they're expected to be pounded on for long periods of time and handle the heat and dissipate it. But uh, yeah, I'd be curious to see, you know, how the SBS 3000 micro micro does. Yeah, see, T- the T-tub. micro mini. Yeah, All right, micro. So I, I'm, I'm I'll, say I'll say that. I'll say from my experience with the 3000 micro, I mean it's legit, you know. So I'll yeah. I'll put my name on it. So if, if the measurements say like, oh, this is pretty whack, and you guys are just hyping it up, there's no way. I'm like, all right. Well, I'm saying, I th- I think you're gonna measure them and say like, all right, these are pretty legit. Yeah. yeah. Like you're you'll be surprised at what they can do because they they're pushing a good amount of power through them. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I mean the the thing I like is that it doesn't move too. You guys have right. uh, seen those like old school like Sunfire True Subwoofer subs. Yeah. I used to have a, I used to have two subwoofers that were um, three ten inch. It's in a triangle. It had a, a active 10 inch. I even had the 12 inch version mm-hmm. of it too. So it had a 12 inch active and then two 12 inch passives. That thing would walk all across my floor, man. Like it's literally, crazy. like it yeah. would move. <laughs> yeah, how'd like you literally? How'd you keep it in place? Put Blue it on tack, right? Not to put it on carpet. Oh. If I put it on my hardwood Rick. floors in my in my two channel setup, it would walk. But mm-hmm. If I put it on carpet, like in a the theater room, it, of course it wouldn't move anywhere. But, that, that reminds me of that one. Remember you reviewed the. Um, the Vanitu transparent one encores. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you had them sitting there and it has a passive radiator on the back. Yeah. And you're like, you're recording and you're like, oh, it, was, it, it almost fell sli- off the. Yeah, it was sliding a little bit. I was like, because it's so smooth. They had that bottom part. <laughs> oh, wow. like, Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've seen, you know, like people talk about doing the sub crawl. And for a long time, I didn't realize people were talking about sub crawls in like 
try to find the best location for it. Right. But what the, I thought they were talking well, about. What did you think? It was kind of like a pub I, crawl? What? <laughs> no, I thought they were actually talking about the subwoofers moving because I've seen that happen so much, yeah. you know, where the subwoofer just starts to walk yeah. on its own. So, so when I first good. when I first got the, I think it was the PB, no, maybe it was the SB16. I've got a video of it somewhere. I was going to post it on my channel one time, but I just never did. But I always take off the bottom feet, you know, because I've got carpet in there. So these rubber feet make it really hard. And the first time I was trying to move the PB16, it's 175 pounds, and it like made these black marks all over my carpet. So I'm like, oh, I gotta fix this. And so I took off the feet, and mm -hmm. I was cranking the music one day uh, with either the SB16 uh, or the PB16. I can't remember which one, but it literally started moving. I mean, it was real small, but it was definitely moving. I'm like, dang, <laughs> man, that's crazy. That's pretty but cool. But when you've got those dual opposing what happens is as one driver is going out and the other driver is going out, it basically cancels out any inertia, you know, that's right. that would cause that subwoofer to move. I reviewed the um, PowerSound Audio uh, S3611 a long time ago, and that had dual opposing 18-inch. Holy cow, man. I mean, it was incredible pressure in my room, but literally I put a glass on top. I mean, the glass didn't move. I mean, the water in it moved a little bit, but it wasn't like an ocean, man. It wasn't going crazy. It wasn't oh, like Jurassic Park style. Yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, but you could see a little, you know, vibration because the whole stinking room was vibrating. Yeah. But it wasn't because the subwoofer was moving. So I really like the the concept of a dual opposing uh, subwoofer. So. Mm. Yeah. I just one thing they mentioned in the in the in the live stream though when they were doing their um, kind of like their announcement of it. Is they mentioned that you know yeah this would even work great inside a cabinet, and I'm thinking, I don't oh, think so. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean it might fit in a cabinet, but acoustically I just can't see how that's going to sound great. Well, I mean, uh, isn't that pass. just band pass? Yeah, it's a sealed box <laughs> firing into a ported box, right? Maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's technically, that, right there. Technically, that's exactly what I've got here at my office set up. So I've got my little clip subwoofer kind of tucked away but i mean i'm not looking for accuracy i just want to be able to hear the low frequencies but it doesn't work he wants now to get anyways. low, get low. Yeah. i'd, I'd low. love to check out the there's a difference the between a, a youth man video and like something like mine or maybe like aaron's right he gets all technical tells you what's going on exactly measures it and michael will put a, a wine glass just to let you know like i'm saying it, it it's moves, not moving baby that's it all moves. you can do Different ways, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not the super technical. I'm the guy that y'all complain about that doesn't. There are do all multiple the ways. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna get you up. We have we have to. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that go. <laughs> you can't just be subjective only. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I feel like this. Like, nah, come no, on. No, I do. I do my. Uh, I do objective measurements. I just don't do them to the level that you guys do, <clears> by <throat> any means. Hey, I'm I've, I've never. Do, by the way, I'm I'm over it. I'm just gonna start being like, "This is what I heard," and you guys should get on or nah. <laughs> you guys should get on board. It comes down. Yeah, make it, it easy, man. Easier. That makes it a whole lot easier. Well, who said here? Uh, you know, we may laugh at Sunfire now, but they're oh, the ones this... that started. It was less. Yeah, or less. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, true. we're not making fun of them. Yeah. I mean, they. St I mean, well, I remember when that Sunfire True Subwoofer came yeah. out. I think it was like three thousand watts or something. Yeah. Uh, Bob Carver design, right? Now, what did and I was just like, for? this is crazy. Like, look at that thing. Look at the surrounds on that thing. It looked amazing. Uh, and I think they did have like a wine glass or something near it. Um, but yeah. Do y'all remember how much that retailed for? Uh, not cheap. Over a, over a thousand? Two thousand? I don't know. I was a kid. I was broke. Mm -hmm. I couldn't afford anything. <laughs> like everything looked expensive to me. <laughs> True. Yeah. I, all I remember at that age was my brother had some huge Kenwood speakers with probably like a 12 a, a four inch and a big old compression one inch tweeter in it and he played dr dre and l o cool j all the time so nice. that's what i remember